Right, this video is about um, targeting and targeted individuals. I'm going to call this video TI story. Uh, what's your TI story? Uh, this is for the purpose of just sharing some information, some ex personal experience I had, I've had, um, things I've witnessed that may shed some light on somebody else's own situation and give them some inspiration in searching out answers. Um, got quite a few things I want to talk about. Um, One of the first things I'd like to mention, I think, is if you're under a, uh, a psychological, you're under a psychological net and you're being targeted with perhaps voice to skull technology and methodologies, um, harassment of that kind, stalk, gang stalking, gaslighting. Um, any little psychological aggravant to let you know that that presence is there and it's over you and you can't see what that presence is. Um, now that you might have heard of something called uh, remote neural monitoring which is a claimed technology which I believe stems from mapping people's human genome, their DNA and their life pattern and resonance frequencies and their thought, mapping their thought patterns which is all completely possible and uh, already practiced in many areas of technology um, now whether that's um, super AI computer which is profiling people's spending patterns, psychological patterns mapping their, their, mapping their psychology mapping the way they think trying to predict, out, out think people, using computers to on one extreme learn about human behaviour and on another extreme manipulate human behaviour. So it's a technology which is advancing and being practised on public without their, their knowledge or say so. I'll give you one example of that. Um, and you've probably seen it in your own in your own life. Um, let's say you're on a shopping channel, and you're shopping for items, and perhaps you buy an item, and then you go to a another separate channel, and then you see suggestions relating to that I, uh, item or items you were looking at on a completely different private party. And you think, well, there's a link there. That that's an association to what I've privately just been shopping, and now that, and now the uh, the intelligence in the background is um, controlling what I I should be viewing, or what I should be looking at, or what I should be shopping for. So this technology is being utilised by the big corporations and media organizations to utilize this technology and it's all linked into to remote neural monitoring it has an association with it because it's a mapping of human behavior and trying to predict and their shopping patterns and mapping where they shop and what they spend online what they spend on the tills all this information is correlated so you might have been aware of that and you might have heard of people being on a psychological program where they're uh, being targeted by uh, automated uh, transmissions from either, you know, perhaps cell towers or or a computer-generated uh, psychological targeting targeting pattern, 
that you've been placed upon and uh, it's being tested on you. So if that's a possibility with you, if you, you, you're under something like that, um, let's say you're not a spiritual person and you don't believe in anything like that, you might not see um, the full picture. So it, it could be twofold. It could be uh, spiritual influences affecting human behaviour. It could be a completely psychological illness it could be, you know it could be it could be a demonic oppression and and assault it could be a focused demonic oppression by prayer groups with evil prayer groups that can put powerful hexes upon you and send uh, forces that they conjure from the underworld against yourself and even this um, practice has been utilised with electronic and microwave technology. So that's another area which needs to be considered. And I, I haven't got all the answers. I'm just looking at all the pieces and trying to evaluate justly what is what. And, and I can't do that in anyone else's situation other than my own. So I'm only really sharing some experience. But if you do feel like you're under a remote ne neural monitoring program, um, I'm, I'd just like to share something I've experienced. I've one hundred. I can one hundred percent say with certainty that I've been on a targeted program with military operatives or uh, black ops, uh, voice to skull, for um, the voice of God technology, whether that's satellite, whether that's, um, you know, like the military use and, and riot control, that sort of technology or focus sound to, uh, voice to skull technology. I've had it all you know, to destroy my life, to make me think I was mentally ill, uh, to make me f believe I was hearing the voice of God, um, or you know, so many things. And it, it, it goes hand in hand with demonic activity. Um, you know, these people are evil. They've got no morals. So what sort of entities are they engaging into their life? What sort of attitudes and moral, moral foundation have they got? Well, most of these people who practice these things are in that way inclined. They're a cult, they're um, superstitious, they're um, Luciferian and demonic and dark. So if you're under these p powerful um, people, whether that's um, remote neural monitoring or targeting, um, something that may help you which which helped me is that uh <clears throat> ten percent of what what they're practicing on you te you know i'm not saying that's an accurate figure but just uh, an estimation ten percent of what they practice is psychological ninety percent is your reaction to their ten percent psychological machination and they don't have to do very much, you do most of it yourself because they can psychologically know how you're going to react because this is what these people do, they will probe for your weaknesses and whatever they, they psychologically work out will destroy you and twist, you, you know, twist your guts and torment you like probing you with sticks, they will use that so 90% of the reaction, your reaction, is the success of their little effort. You know, these people are lazy and idle. You know, they, and they get paid lots of money. And I want to, uh, and pe I've heard people say, well, how do they get the, you know, where do they get the funds from? How, where, where do they get the manpower? Well, these people never educate themselves. They never investigate how these shadow uh, secret societies and um, shadow branches of um, powers operate. They operate. They're, they're 
there one big association of criminal activity. They set up uh, slush funds, charities. So a lot of charities on the earth are actually just false fronts that, they, that a conglomerate of people have set up as a front. They get gullible people to run it as a good cause and they set it up as a charity but they they invest in that charity to get it going and then the way they justify making the money is that the people of the charity are paying back the loan that they started so they start with charity status and it's tax exempt but it's st it starts with an agreement of an investment so the investment has to be paid back to the shareholders and the shareholders set up the charity and the charity the people they get to manage the charity which is separate pays back the shareholders from from any money it makes before it the money goes to charity so it's a business it's a it's a way of breaking off profit out of lots of these little slush funds and there's many ways you know there's many many different ways of doing it and these people are criminal families and they're organized so they have they've all got their fingers in pies so they've they've, they've got enough money to fund all these people and sp and um pay them very well some of these targeted perps um get paid uh you know very well and they can afford to pay it because it's you know it's it's siphoned out of uh, wherever they can get it. So um, one thing to be like I say, one thing to be aware of is um, most of it's your reaction. So if that if you can catch that, if you can um, deal with that, you're not going to react so well you're going to be guarded you're going to be aware you're going to be enlightened by what is happening and then you can deal with your reaction you can start to work on how you're going to react and this, it's a psychological battle and the battle's just not to chase your shadow not to fight you know just to grin and bear it and suffer it because they're not going to go away they're all going to always going to be probing for a reaction and if you're a target, you've got to consider, well, why have you been targeted? It could be just point, a pointless exercise to test on people. There could be a reason. Um, when I started looking into targeting and investigating cases, the first case I, I uh, come across was a newspaper story of a, um, a lady in, in the UK and... Uh, she was encouraged, you know, the local community were encouraging uh, the local people in, the, in, in that borough to report any crimes, there'd been a lot of vandalism. And one lady, she saw uh, somebody trample over some flowers or pull up some flowers and, and she reported this person. And the person she spoke to took a dislike into this lady and put her on a, um, a security list and um, I actually looked into this now the late, there's a lot of council bodies a lot of um, council officers um, DHS uh, Department of Work and Pensions officers have been given more security access they can apply for um, you know permission I'm not sure of the uh, the name of the order, but they can apply for to investigate somebody's um, personal activity, their bank account, online. So they have extra security powers that they can utilise. And I was looking at a statistic that this was one of the most over-abused um, requests for this permission to target people. Basically, you get everyday people working at councils given permission to start exercising godship over these people. And these people are putting people on these lists and those lists get passed to other people. And then the, the, there's no questions asked. You're just, you could be, t the people could be told you're a security threat. They could be, you could, they could be told this or that or the other. 
and you go on to this list and this happened to this lady it's one of the first cases and she got targeted she got harassed she got gang stalked and it was all through report she could trace her targeting to that event so I'll leave that as a thread for you because that could be you know that might be there might be someone listening to this that, that can relate to that and begin to start to build up a picture um, I have many avenues where I can locate my targeting and my targeting has been consistent and it's changed and I've in, I've in, encountered other targeting as well as the targeting I was already receiving so I have that I've had fortune in, in, an, in a positive way I've had f uh, fortunate enough to have a few experiences to give me that um, contrast and a bit of extra to get hold of and uh, figure this in the dark, figure out what, well, what, where did this come from? And I can, uh, I can give you one example. I can definitely tell you how it, how it was utilised, and who uh, engaged the targeting and why. Um, uh, I can't remember how many years, about 15 years ago, uh, my parents brought their home, their council home, it was a council home, they, they were renting it, and they and they took a mortgage out and p brought their home. And a few years later, uh, the local council decided to make up this story that the houses were unfit to live in. They had this concrete can, so it was a lie. Uh, we, we actually paid for a chartered surveyor and there was absolutely nothing wrong with the houses. So they lied, but the local authorities, you know, went with it, you know, regardless of the truth, because they were. it was an investment for them as well. So it was a local council fix scam it was a housing association now I'd done some research this housing association I named them the Sentinel Housing and um, I researched them and they were actually chained they were a snake that changed its skin I found an account of their past activities and how they operate so I started to discover who these people were I knew that they were um, dishonest from the start because when you go to deal with them, you, you you face what you're up against, the sort of people and attitudes you're up against and who they're with, and they're with local authorities. So it's corruption in high places, it's wickedness, and, and the local authorities just wink at it, they turned a blind eye. So I've done some digging, and they are all City of London investment bankers and they set up a charity they get charity status they set they pay to run this charity they get patsies to run it and with amongst those patsies they plant their own people and then they invite the public in to have their say but they control one third of the public vote and and they they give the public one third the management has the f another third and then the shareholders have the final third. Of course the shareholders and the management are on the same side so they always overturn the public petition. So they get complete control over once you're in, they, they're, they're driving, there's nothing you can do. It's just a false avenue to, you know, shout in a bucket you don't really no one's going to take any notice or act upon it because it's a fix from the start and this is a load of uh, investment bankers and they invest in a, a building project they get people on board they get the builders on board now the builders are in on this scam they, they, they do this for a living they do this on a day-to-day -day basis harassing people and threatening them and then you find out they got demolishing crews and they're all thick and when you stand up against them and the, and the local authorities turn a blind eye including the police they absolutely walk all over you or try to walk all over you like they own you and uh, I had to stand up against that and uh, deal with them and as soon as I called them out 
uh, you know, the gang stalking turn happened and the, you know, they, they have connections, even the police, you know, they, they, they get, uh, you have something criminal happen to some damage or a fire, you know, they set fire to something. We had our fence set fire to and all, you know, loads of things and you call the police and they're like mocking you, or, you know, it's playing it down just to reinforce everything and they're like, um, later on you find out they're associated and you, that they're just all part of it and it's, it's almost like a stage load of actors all playing this same game and they send, they you know, they have um, they put their own people in the housing so they've got a, a handful of people on their new building project that, that, that are planted there and um, I discovered this because um, there's a there's a str there's an extra <laughs> few houses they built on the side for their relatives and they're all you know twice as big twice as luxurious and they're little perks for their family members and um, so they they rattle a few key youth to go and cause trouble and these few key youth will stir up the other key youth the gullible vulnerable you know who don't aren't aware of this power and 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 they look up to these youth because they think that you know, they can get away with anything and they're just the police can't touch them then they start boasting that the police can't touch them and then of course all the everyday people think wow you know and they want a piece of it and they start following around following around this group that they lead around to target people so you have about 40 or 50 people sort of like <laughs> antagonizing you throwing stones and 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 the police aren't on hand to do anything so that was my one of my experience of targeting that's just one. That that's just that's just someone, a big organisation, utilising a technique to you know to hammer you when you stand up against them to destroy you. Um, and that sort of run parallel with other targeting uh, previous to that. And uh, that that was just something I'd like to share that 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 may shed some light on your own, uh, on somebody else's circumstance. Uh, there's other techniques I've experienced when, when you really stand up to them and, and you show that you don't care, you're not frightened of them and you're not afraid to speak the truth and call them out, they, they get a bit more subtle and they get a bit more indirect that, that, that they want you to shut up. Uh, recent, um, the most recent thing like that I can recall was possibly two years ago, and it was in the summer, summer evening, and I was out in the garden, and I could hear this rushing of wind really fast from the distance, and I live in a, a um, I live in a the, an aviation place uh, in Farnborough, and it's the home of aviation. It's where Cody first. It's where Cody crashed and killed himself, I think, in, in a tree in in the middle of the park. And there's the Royal Aircraft Establishment, so it's a home of aviation, and I'm quite aware of the how high aircraft can fly legally and we even have the red one of the red arrows displays um, and it was tragic to hear that a red arrow pilot was killed recently but one of the um, red arrow displays is in Farnborough a Farnborough airshay and there's the, where the two planes fly at each other and do the miss. That that flight pattern is directly over uh, the house I currently live in, and I've seen it. Um, I think they hold it every four years, and it, it's always they always follow the same line, and that line just happens to be right over my house. 
and so I know that they get extra permission to fly a bit lower and and I, I'm not sure it's how high, I think it's uh, perhaps 150, 200 feet. You can see the pilot in the cockpit and it's literally a few feet above the house. It's, it, you know, they've been told off for um, popping out windows for going too fast and flying too low. I, I, I can't give you the exact height, but you can see the pilot in his glass cockpit because he's flying upside down or or at a kilter as he approaches and then they tip like one one tips one way one tips the other and it's very low it's very you know for uh, for the drama uh so i know the the height of um flights so one uh, uh, evening i was in the back garden the air show wasn't on you know this was a, a non air show year and uh I could hear this rushing of wind very fast, couldn't see nothing. And then directly aiming towards me was a drone, a grey drone, very low, prob probably uh, if I had a 10 foot pole I could have stood on my garage and hit it. It was very low and it come directly over my garden and done a right hand bank and then flew off and uh that to me that was uh that wasn't a a lawful flight they wouldn't have been allowed to do that that was too dangerous that's too low i could hear it i could see it and it was straight past me like that was shook me up because it was so low so that was a a little warning <laughs> i'd oh, send a death drone to show you that you know we can target you from a building so many miles away but hey ho hey. um so that's how they may warn people off or they or or they may suggest it another way that they they want to mean you harm uh so that was some of the things i wanted to cover uh I got anything else? Um, yeah, the sonic sound, like uh, another targeted method, is noise, and I'm not sure the technology if it's ultrasound, sonic, or microwave transmissions. It, uh, it it's not audible in, to the ear. It's audible to the the brain that tra uh, translates the frequency into sound as though your ears hearing it and it's a constant drone and uh, it's to psychologically disrupt your sleep and uh, it could be a community thing it could be you know be tested in our community it's, and it could be uh, a subconscious thing just to keep people in a certain state of mind a certain state of aggravation or a certain or it disrupts your sleep so you're tired and you're volat you could become volatile if you if, if you were to be allow it and aggravated because it's just uh, like water torture that's another method that's used um, so that it, if that is helpful that that could be um something you're experiencing and you may be wondering um what to do about it if so if you've come across this video and you are experiencing any any of the things i've mentioned um and you're looking for hope you're looking for an escape you're looking for understanding um there's so much uh, there's so many layers to the activities and there's so many methodologies and there's so many people that can utilize this uh, practice so that needs to be uh, a picture will need to be established and that takes knowledge and information and and the only way to do that is to investigate and search for it um, and you will find it you will 
it's the same whenever you apply yourself you will you will find it might take you might have to crawl through some you know little narrow uh prickly territory to get get to what you need but if you keep going and keep searching you will uncover things which will uh, make a big difference to your understanding uh, if you're not if you're not spiritual you're at a disadvantage and um, you're vulnerable and because the people who uh, persecute are spiritual and they do believe in gods and they do believe in spirits and they do believe in conjuring up demons and uh, peeping uh, uh, you know it's div divination it's uh, there's so many different na names for it sorcery um, peeping wizards you know they look into things that they don't really understand but it gives them power it's like they, uh, mediums they speak to uh, spirits that claim to be dead loved ones but these people never um, ask for any of authentication of that they are those dead loved ones they just trust these spirits and these spirits are demonic they're lying they're lying spirits and if you're unaware of this and you're unaware of the excuse me <coughs> if you're unaware of the spiritual underworld you're you're going to be a sitting duck because these people are and that's a that's a hold they have over you so um my recommendation is to seek uh, the living god to seek the lord jesus christ and with all your heart with all your if you're if you're um, desperate if you're listening to this and you're desperate you've got no escape you've got no one to turn to turn to the lord because he's faithful and he will answer you if you believe if you if you repent if you and repent just means to put away everything just give yourself up and and uh, look at your life be honest about yourself be honest about uh, you're a sinner you're a bad person you know you've done bad things you may have done good things but you've also done bad things and you can't unmark that record you can say sorry but you can't put back something you've broken and god wants a humble contrite soul and he and he dim he requires faith and trust because if you if you um appro uh, approach god in any other attitude he's not going to answer because that's the that's the attitude that's going to prepare your heart to receive his answer his heart to you his love for you and that comes by his son and what his son did for you on the cross and he suffered everybody's life and sin and paid the demand of justice with his holy life with his precious life and he was he was innocent so he took on your punishments he took on all your problems and he paid the debt and he wants to give you life eternal and he wants to save your life and in exchange he give you his life and holiness and his eternal heart and spirit and fullness of his love but to to do that you have to believe because he can't deny himself and he's made it so you have to appropriate his atonement by faith and by believing in his son jesus christ who was sent from God to die for the sins of the world and who was lifted up on the cross and he died and, and, and he, he gained the victory over death and hell and he rose from the grave, took up his body, appeared to many people and then ascended back to heaven to be, to be on the right hand of God and he's faithful to his promise, he cannot deny himself and his um, salvation has been dispensed and it's on the cross it's finished on the cross and it needs to be appropriated by faith and belief and that's the only way you're going to know God now you might not believe that but if you don't believe that you'll never know because it's true 
and God is. And he sent his son and he's given a faithful witness. If you, if you appropriate that, you'll receive that witness and that's what he's promised. He's faithful to his promise. He will save you if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart believing. He'll save you. If you don't believe, he can't save you. But that doesn't make God go away. That doesn't make his, you know, his existence um, a non-reality. He is a reality, but he needs to be believed and trusted. So if, if you're desperate just, and perhaps you struggle to believe, perhaps, you know, perhaps something's happened in your life where you just can't believe in God, I, I just invite you to put that aside. Uh, because there's nothing more precious than your soul and you can lose your soul forever if you don't know God and you may not your your circumstances could get worse and you 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 might find help with other people but you, you you're really in a desperate situation you're all in the same boat in a desperate situation which may be a, a temporary comfort but it's not the ultimate answer it's a good thing, but it might not be. It's not the solution. So I'm offering a solution. I'm offering you hope. I'm offering you escape and deliverance from a wicked, awful situation. So if you're feeling like giving in and, and you can't take any more, I just plead with you not to not to do that because there's hope, there's life. And and the Lord can make these these big big mountains shrink to become like little little dust mites and he will lift you through it but you won't know that until you believe in him so if that's you and, and, and you feel touched by this at all I just encourage you to seek the living God in private don't don't go to religion don't go, you don't need any advocate other than Jesus Christ you don't need religion you don't once you know Jesus you don't need anyone to teach you you just need that relationship started and then that relationship will build and grow and you'll grow and you'll, you'll, you'll be full of peace, you'll be full of joy and understanding and, and you're increasing understanding and he'd, he'd show you things you've, that you'd have never seen on your own because you were blind and you were blinkered because you didn't have that knowledge and you can gain a knowledge of the living God and a testimony of Jesus Christ. And that is priceless, that is a precious, the Lord called it the pearl of great price. So if you're, um, if that's you, uh, I, you know, I, I pray to God that, uh, you, you know, you um, take up the invitation because his heart and his hands are outstretched for people who are suffering and downtrodden who are forgotten, who are persecuted, whether that's justly persecuted, unjustly persecuted. God is merciful and he will forgive everybody of their sins if they confess their sins, confess they're a sinner and then seek this salvation in fear. Fear God because um, his word's true and, it, and his word says that after death is the judgment. That's when God is it's his justice because it, it, in life it's a mortal probation and he's outstretched mercifully to anyone in that probation but once that probation passes it's justice and if you've denied his mercy you remain in his justice which it will be hell because God is holy and he can't be mocked he can't you know it's like gravity he can't deny himself you jump out of an aeroplane you're going to hit the ground. So if you don't pull your parachute, you you're going to ascend to the ground and come to a, uh, a heavy impact, and it, you know you'll die. If you got that parachute, you're going to land safely. Um, and that's basically an analogy of life. It's a probation to know the living God, and He's created life. And his life is a testament of his creation. It's an intelligent design. It didn't spring from a, uh, a pudding of uh, algae. 
it's in it, everything's in order everything is of its own kind trees are of their own kind plants are of their own kind animals are of their own kind humans are of their own kind that's totally contradictory to what the world teaches about evolution that monkeys turn to pigs to you know it it it's denies science because science knows that's impossible uh, but because people believe uh, lying scientists over the truth and you know we're all scientists we've all got the capability of, to do science and forensic examination and research and use the methods and techniques to establish evidence and that's what people have been robbed of in the world that's what education robs you of it stops you to think and it tells you what to think rather than how to think and question and reason uh, schools have changed in the last hundred or so years they've been over infiltrated by um, corrupt hands uh, Jesuit influence Masonic influence and they just want to dumb down children then they want to uh, choke teachers and teachers are compliant to it you know so they, they just toe the line and get on with the job and then they rob uh, children you know parents have to send their children to school blah 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 and uh, it's all taken advantage of so uh, people have we've all been robbed of our a lot of knowledge and uh, the Holy Bible says people perish because of a lack of knowledge God's people perish because they didn't have knowledge they couldn't see what's coming they didn't understand what was going on around them and if you don't believe in God you're not gonna see what God sees you're going to remain in your ignorance. And like uh, Christ said, the blind lead the blind into the ditch. And we're all blind. I, I was blind, but now I can see. And I can only see because of Jesus Christ. Although I live in a... I, I don't have the, you know, the full light of... I can see like Christ can see. I have his light in the dark. And I've got a lamp, and I can sh I can hold that lamp up and shine it in different areas, and I can see what what well what is the truth and what isn't the truth. But I can't do that on my own. That's been given to me. That's a gift, and that's a gift God will give all, all people that sincerely seek Him and ask. He wants to bless people, but He doesn't want people to be proud and arrogant and haughty and raised up above another one. He's not a respecter of persons. He's gracious and loving to anyone who seeks out that graciousness. And you go with your begging bowl here, fill it. If you're full and you don't go to to the Lord, you're, you, that's what you, you know. You, your increase will stop there. You'll you, you'll have that full fullness, then you'll drink it, and then you won't have any more. You'll have a, you won't have so much increase. But if you're humble and and uh, to, to put your dependence upon God, He'll fill you. He, he'll increase you. Um, the Lord said, uh, "Who can add? Which man can add a uh, thought to add uh, any cubit to his stature, any measure to his own stature? You know, because what we are." We can't change, we can't add or take away, but we can live in the illusion, uh, um, like the pride of life, we can achieve things and think that that's increased our stature, but it hasn't increased our stature, it just in, it might increase your material wealth, might increase your, your, light, you know, your, your comfortableness, but it doesn't make you any more of a, a wicked person than you already are. Or it doesn't make you a better person than you already are. The experience might teach you something, but that increases for because of God's knowledge and the experience of life to experience that. God gives the increase. So you can't really make make yourself a better person because you're stuck with what you are. You can change that, but really what you are is what you are. And the world tries to hold up this image that we all it distracts you from your true self and your true self is that you're a creation of God and you've, you're lost from God and he wants you to be his child, his, he'll adopt you, you'll be his, 
his own seed, his own his own flesh and blood. And you will you will be a child of God. You'll know God personally. You'll be His. He He would have purchased you with His own blood. And you will you will receive that freely, without without price. He won't expect anything for that. It's a free gift. And when you receive that, you'll you'll realise and taste how loving God it really is. You'll taste it, you won't fully grasp the depths of that love. But you will know that love and you'll comprehend that love because he will help you comprehend it. And he'll give you he'll impart that love onto you. And you'll have that love for other people. And your life will be purposeful, no matter your circumstances. So if you're experiencing a hard time, I, I, I extend that invitation to anybody. Uh, if anybody, um, so if there's any Christian suffering out there who, who discovered this video and are having a hard time and they would like prayer, or they would just like, um, you know, they don't know anyone, um, and they would, you know, like prayer, I'll be happy if you to, would to request me to pray for you, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm limited to what I can do, but I would do what I can if anyone's uh, needful of, uh, you know, somebody to pray and intercede for them. Uh, I'm going to, I think I've about covered all I'd like to cover, so um, I'd like to wish everybody well. Uh, hope everybody's doing fine. Uh, if you're a target, um, I encourage you to hold on and keep going whatever your circumstances and to to know this evil for what it is and to discover life the meaning of life if you if that's not if that's something you don't you're not fully aware of to seek you know what is the meaning what's the what is the priority of life what's the main sharp priority of life what is the point of life and that's a good question, you know, life can't be pointless. Otherwise we wouldn't behave good. We'd all be wicked, you know, it'd be anything goes by everybody. Because we've got a temperance in the world, we've got um, a good arm and a bad arm. They'll all, you know, that we're in a time where there'll always be some good on the earth. There'll always be... Uh, some human action that will restore faith in mankind but that's to the glory of God and we live in a fallen world so we have that evil side and we've all got that evil in us and we're all capable of doing good but there's some on the extreme are just pure evil from the start whether that's their own fault or consequences a generation of that sort of bad behaviour and you're just born into that sort of generation and you don't know any different. And if you're one of those people, there's hope for you that, you know, there's not a person God cannot forgive. There's not a person God didn't die to save. He died to save all men, regardless of what they've done. And if that's you, you've, you've got one opportunity to repent and be saved. Because if you leave it, you may never got, you get the opportunity. And that will be your choice. That will be your that will be your judgment. You chose that. And that's the same. We're all judged for our choices. And you go to hell for rejecting the, the love of God, the, the mercy of his son. He sent his son to die. Uh, just consider if you had a son and uh, or a daughter, and you you know you sacrifice them for the benefit of others, and they, and nobody turn around and thank you, and then they they you know they hated you and turned on you, you know you, how would you feel about those people? Would you think twice about giving your son up? You would, but God wouldn't, and He hasn't. He's done that regardless that He would be. He knew He'd be rejected by a majority of the people. But he died regardless, without price. He didn't go, I'm going to die for them, I'm not dying for them. He just died for everybody. 
Even the people you can't forgive, he died for those. So if you reject Christ and they accept him, what's your torment going to be like in hell? Because you didn't forgive those people, whether God forgave them or not. Because they'd be in hell with you if they didn't get forgiveness. So you'd both be justly judged for rejecting Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter who's, uh, how much good you've done, doesn't outweigh how much bad you've done. We're all sinners, we're all going to hell. And our only escape is Jesus Christ, because he knows that we're sinners. So he's the only one concerned about our sin. So he died to save us from it. And sin is death and eternal hell. So that's what's at stake. That's what's at stake. So targeting is not really important. Your soul is important. And you need to grab it with both hands and be saved. And then you'll experience abundance of life. You'll know the Creator. And you're going to have a future with that Creator. And you're going to learn forever from the Creator. From this intelligent, beautiful Creator who creates these beautiful creations. And you'll be walking daily with that, that relationship. And that will fluctuate. Sometimes you'll, be, you'll feel far away from God. And other times you'll feel like you're... You, you know, you're holding his hand and he's picking you up and showing you things that you can't see over. So I um, encourage people to um, continue if they're having a hard time and just, you know, hold on to some hope to an, another day. Um, it's a good a principle to just take one day at a time. The Lord said that there's enough evil in the day to worry about what tomorrow is going to bring. And that's quite, you know, that is a wise saying. And if you're having the most bad this day, you know, there's always tomorrow. If you don't know Christ, it, you, you, it's, a lonely, it's a lonely life. It can be a lonely life with, with the Lord. But it's far more lonely without the Lord. And um, not to... He give you a sober mind, a peace, and a sober judgment. You won't, you won't go mad. You won't go out of your mind. And that's quite a possibility that people just crack because it's um, these techniques are designed by the people who who do that sort of work to make people crack. This is all techniques learnt from military intelligence, and there's a big hand of military intelligence in, involved in this practice, and it's a psychological program to to cr make people crack or see what they can get away with or whatever their whatever there's in their purpose in their heart so whatever you're on the end of you, you would you know you would have the light of god to figure it out and put all the pieces in place and then escape it and then challenge it stand up to it for their sake because they're you know they're lost they're idiots they don't know what they're doing and they need saving, because their judgment's going to be, you know, swift. And they don't know it, they don't believe it, they think they can get away with it. And they don't see what happens to those who haven't got away with it and have been dealt with. It, you know, it's, uh, it goes forward, it doesn't look behind itself to see the, the chaos in its wake. It, it's selfish. And it will roll on until it's too late. And then it'll look back and, and, and then it'll be way out of the way, way over the cliff, and then it'll drop. Um, so it's not as big as, pe as, as you may feel it is it, when you're under the cosh of it. And like I said at the beginning, it's 90% of the success of it is your reaction to it and your lack of knowledge. So um, I'm going to close there. Uh, I'm running into the hour. Um, so I'd like to just... Uh, encourage people on pray I pray for targeted individuals and I pray for people that they you know they come to what I've come to but it, you know in their own lives in their own not because I want them to but because I want them to I just want to share what I've experienced because it would be it would be wrong uh, um, it would be wrong not to share Jesus Christ it would be wrong not to share that uh, the blessings I've received in it and it would be wrong not to warn people it would be um, 
it's a selfish thing if if you know that there's danger coming and you don't warn somebody you're just as guilty for that for that blood you t you're taking part in that um in that evil if there was an army coming and you knew about it and you didn't warn the people that they're coming to attack you just uh, it's up to them to go and find out with that actually it's not my it's not my business you know and then it comes that you 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 had an opportunity to do something but you didn't you failed to act um so, so um salvation is the only only way it's the only hope in life and it makes a massive difference to be on a foundation where you can start to deal with all the problems that that would be thrown at you and there'll be things thrown out at people in the future that are new and no one's experienced it. So we're always up against the stacked deck because they've always got the information and the access to the information that we don't have. They got the utilities we don't have. They got the, the connections and associations that we don't have. And you, it's like you against the world because they can utilize all that around them with ease because they're well practiced and if you're under like a big group of a, um, a theatre scene like a, you've got a lot of bodies on you you know you're powerless not w without God you're powerless because they, they, they will own you they will destroy you you won't know how to deal with it you won't know how to react and your chances are very slim I, there's not many people there's only a few strong people that survive and not everyone's got the strength, not everyone some people have the strength but they don't have the knowledge and the tools and, and, and they're destroyed on a daily basis people are, um, are destroyed through this, their lives are broken, they kill themselves um, if I can prevent that from anyone um, I would thank God that um, I was able to sh share something that that, that I'd experienced and turn that awful experience into something positive and good and loving. So if that's you, if, if you're looking for hope, if you're under the cosh, seek the Lord and he will save you. And I'm going to close there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.